This is Twit. A uh, Princeton professor and sociologist decided that she did not want big data to see what she was up to. She and her husband uh, are, are expecting. And she's decided that she doesn't want big data, whatever big data means, to know. Uh, I'm talking about Janet Vertesi. She's an assistant professor of sociology at Princeton University. Yep. She said it was the hardest thing in the world. But uh, you know what? She lost her credibility right away with me because she said, I am a conscientious objector to Google, but I'm still on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so right there, I go, well, they lady. They all are studying who you are, lady. what you do, what your behaviors are to serve you she better. She says, content. I've been on Facebook about 10 years you since know? it first opened to the <laughs> Ivies. I got off Google two years ago when they changed their privacy policies. So don't use any Google products. I was already a conscientious objector to Google, but I'm very active online. Strike two. Yeah. Uh, I'm not fearful of that technology. It was really an experimental thing. What would it look to try to do it? What would it look like to do it without walking away from Facebook or Twitter? So the first thing they said is, okay, we're expecting, but don't tell any, don't put it on, don't mention it on social media. She told her friends, don't tweet it. She said, we, we don't put it online. We're doing an experiment. Then she, she said, whenever we searched for anything baby related, we did it on tour. So the privacy network. So nobody would know that it was her searching. Yeah. And then when they bought something, they created a fake uh, email account on Amazon. And when they would buy something, they'd have it delivered to an Amazon locker in Manhattan. So they didn't have her home address. Um, and she says, we stocked it with Amazon gift cards that we bought with cash to draw a distinction between our online lives and our offline lives. So and keep keep in mind, like if she really wanted to keep it quiet, all she had to do was pay cash for diapers at Target, right? right? Well, and don't you know, go is, on this the is internet. An assistant right? to try, yeah, exactly. And don't do any searches about baby stuff, right. and don't click on any baby ads but, on Facebook. Okay, so she says it was a you lot know. of work. I didn't expect it to be this hard. It was extremely impractical, very inconvenient. But I, it's okay, this is the thing I I would say. What what have you gained by all of this effort? What have you gained? No baby ads. Well, don't you want baby ads? <laughs> no, no, no. But, but basically, basically, the the thing they're trying to compete to do, all of these businesses, and people are like, oh, our privacy, I don't want corporations doing. Why? Because the corporation's goal is to beat the other guys of offering you precisely what you need yes. at the exact moment that you need it. They don't want to yeah. give you power goal. mower ads. They want to give you diaper ads. Well, isn't that what you want? I exactly. I'm with you, man. I'm, in I'm the, very puzzled. I'm an all-in uh, all guy. There's a lot of, there is a new well, digital divide. Well, we know divide. that. You, 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 there you. is a new digital divide, though, between people like this who are trying to stay offline. Richard Stallman and I had, had dinner, and he has a button, say, pay cash for everything, and, and he certainly is not on Stallman, Facebook. of course, the creator of GNU, the GNU Project, yeah. and one of the original MIT hackers. But he doesn't use credit cards, and he doesn't use Facebook. Well, so fine. He wants, Good for him. Yeah. But he's at a disadvantage to people like me who the system I'm just saying, does what is the penalty? The only way you can make a penalty, Dvorak does this every time, is if you imagine some draconian scenario. Like, I don't know, Google gets taken over by Adolf Hitler, and now he's got all the data. Or Facebook is actually a front for the CIA, and now they've got all the... But what is... But what is really happening? To, All they want to do... Didn't your baby have to get a, a birth certificate at the hospital? Yeah, did, by the way, I've been, when, <laughs> from day one, when Henry was born 19 years ago, we started getting offers because of the hospital immediately sell... The hospital sells your information immediately. Oh, yeah. And they give you a gift basket. Of, and then from we keep getting... And right up to when he was 18, and then the Selective Service emailed him and said, now you have to register for the draft. From For 18 years, they knew exactly... They kept... They followed him. We moved three times. They followed him. He kept getting all those mail. That, that, that's what they do. And you didn't need Google or big data to do it. Well, you, you, but I ask you again, what I is bet, the horrible outcome? I bet you claimed him as a deduction on your taxes, right? Yeah. Yeah, so he's in the system somewhere. I don't care. So what? <laughs> he has to register for the selective service. It's not like I can avoid it. So what is exactly the harm? I understand people don't want to. And you know what? You don't have to. Don't use the internet. You're going to go to a lot of trouble, but you can do that. I don't understand I mean, what they're I so mean, worried I think, about. I think part of the thing is we want to believe that we are not creatures of that are that predictable. We don't want to believe that we're we just are, coins though. that get flipped. We are. Uh, but we are, yeah. And as we've said on the show before, it's like, you know, you exist as a feedback loop. You know, who you are is what you do is determines who you are. And, and uh, if you think about it, the ability to know your past actions as a predictor of what you're about to do 
is really just the concept of, of reputation. As much as people get misty-eyed and talk about, oh, why can't it be like it used to be when we would all were in small towns and everybody knew who everyone was? Guess what? We're coming back to those days, and it's because of technology and the Internet. I don't know that it's terrible. I, I've been driving my car around. I, I bought a car like what, like seven years ago. And, uh, and, and it's getting old and I've been thinking about buying a new one. Sure enough, out of nowhere, CarMax sends me an email saying like, Hey man, we bet your car is getting kind of old. You've have you thought about buying a new one. And it's like, I don't know that that's terrible. That is exactly as evil as, uh, thinking to call someone on their birthday and say, you really value right. their friendship. You know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. a matter of I understand it's a matter people want to effort and timing. People want to control this data. I understand, but it doesn't help to use scary words like targeting you or uh, big data. These these are kind of We're, scary, intentionally, I think, scary words to make you fear something. And I'm not sure exactly I understand the When I talk harm. about it, I, I, I use the scary words if because you want, it if, is true. If you're I'm, scared of a police state, be scared of a police state. There's lots to be scared of with a police yeah, state. Yeah, when I cross Absolutely. the Golden Gate Bridge on the way here, there's a, a robot taking a picture so of my what? driver's license. My, uh, so my what? car license plate. What are they going to do with that? Well, I know where you For were on Friday the 3rd of... What? Who cares? <laughs> if you're a, Seriously, what is the damage? What is the harm here? For me, nothing. <laughs> but, well, uh, I'm just I'm wondering now. You and you, so don't you can do things. It's a, as 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 Professor Vertezzi pointed out. It's a lot of work to stay out of these databases. <laughs> I just I and I understand that people wish they could control their privacy, etc. Um, but I'm just not yeah, sure you know what, what is, the it, horrible here, here's outcome what I, is that they're worried. Here's about. what I think it is, and and go ahead, you know, uh, pencil me as 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 being off the deep end on this. But I think there's a deep seated cultural desire for us to not believe that with all apologies to Padre SJ that the Catholics were right that there really are an all-seeing eye that knows all the filthy dirty things that we do to ourselves when nobody's looking yeah. that has been throughout all of human history been a, a tool used by all religions uh, in order to enforce people to be good and now it's a reality it's it's a it's a fact that that if not you woke Seeing up. You by do the, way, the actual deed. You we saw all the bits that led up to it, and we're pretty sure. Burr, burr, you know, it's like, well, we're looking at your credit card bill. You sure did go to the liquor store twelve times last month, so I think you got a problem. You know, that kind of thing. It's we, we don't want to believe that. We reject that idea. We want to believe we're captains of our own lives, and and to to know that number one, our behaviors are predictable. That they're that they're so predictable that large corporations will bank money on the fact. That it's, it's like, well, he's done A, B, C, and D. He's definitely into F. Uh, and then, uh, which for the record, I am into F. Fine, you got me. <laughs>